In Venezuela, the head of the Venezuela Nuestra campaign command, Jorge Rodriguez, denounced the plans of the right wing to disregard the results of the forthcoming elections on 28 July. In the United States, another Democrat legislator asks Joe Biden to leave the country's presidential race. And in the Netherlands, the International Court of Justice has ruled by 14 votes to one that Israel must immediately cease all new settlements activity and evacuate all settlers from the occupied Palestinian territories. Hello, welcome to From the South, from the headquarters of Telesur English in Havana, Cuba. My name is Pablo Micheliche. We begin with the news. And we go live now to Caracas, to our special envoy, Junos Sones. Junos, what is the latest information now ahead of the July 28th presidential election after the recent declarations by the head of the Venezuela Nuestra campaign command, Jorge Rodriguez? Hello. Uh, good day from Caracas, Venezuela. Just minutes ago, Jorge Rodriguez finished his press conference. Jorge Rodriguez is general coordinator of the campaign our Venezuela that supports the candidacy of Nicolas Maduro, the current president. But Jorge Rodriguez responded to another act that occurred yesterday, on Thursday. You, on Thursday, Biagio Pilieri, the spokesperson of the Democratic Unitary Platform, has announced in a press conference that his a movement which is the extreme right-wing oppositional movement will only count those ballot results that they achieve on election day they will gather their results from each of the 15,000 voting centers and abide only by that count thus Pilieri implicitly has stated that they will not abide by what the National Election Council which is the official institution were responsible for the elections will announce now to this statement Jorge Rodriguez responded in his press conference he compared this behavior with a football match where one of the teams brings its own referee to the game and only abides by the ruling of its own referee that is only when its own referee says it's a penalty then they play a penalty but Rodriguez said this behavior of not abiding by institutional framework of Venezuela and its legislative framework is part of a bigger plan. And he started mentioning that part of the opposition has already abandoned campaigning for the elections. They are not even in the campaigning. They are not seeking votes because they don't have the votes. And instead, they have bots, he said, referring to uh, artificial intelligence led uh, figures in social media and the internet the plan of the opposition what is it according to jorge rodriguez they want to first uh, promote more the uh, polls that are being published by media and especially he named here the cnn spanish uh, media but also uh, other media communications media like bloomberg and european uh, companies and uh, institutions. He said they are publishing news about polls which have been paid by oppositional figures and which show the oppositional figures in contradiction to the reality far ahead. And then he said they will continue by not recognizing the uh, uh, statement, the announcement of the National Election Council and promote instead their own numbers to the public and then he said uh, they will call foreign governments to not recognize the results which are published here in Venezuela by the official institution responsible for the elections but and thus not recognize the winner which according to Jorge Rodriguez will clearly be Maduro so this is a process which according to Jorge Rodriguez is a kind of repeat of what happened with Juan Guaido. He actually said this is a Guaido do, punto dos, Guaido zero dos version 
a repeat of what had happened there with the opposition. Already knowing that they're going to lose the election, they are abandoning campaign and they are not abiding the rules of the institutional framework. Here it is worth remembering that two major extreme right-wing oppositional candidates have not signed an agreement some weeks ago uh, which were which was signed by all other oppositional candidates and the uh, president maduro uh, they rejected with their uh, rejecting the signature to recognize the announcement of the national election board but jorge rodriguez is self-confident he said first we will win and they know referring to the opposition they know we will win that is why they abide by this plan and he said on july 28 we will come out in crowds and we will celebrate our victory and we will celebrate and defend this victory with our lives if necessary said the chief campaign uh, the chief coordinator of the our venezuela campaign supporting nicolas maduro so he presented himself quite self-confident he to repeat it once he says that the opposition has already partly abandoned campaigning and is abiding by other uh, measures which are illegitimate, which are outside of the institutional framework. And he presented himself still confident of winning the elections and of defending the victory achieved on July 28. Thank you, Yunus, for this updated information regarding the uh, process, uh, electoral process in Venezuela. We will contact you again for this and other news regarding the elections before the July 28 uh, electoral process. That was Yunus Soners. We continue on other news. The agenda of the Venezuelan presidential candidates intensified a few days ahead of the general elections in the country, scheduled for next July 28. Our special envoy also, Yunus Soners, with the report. Pinto, roughly to be translated as spotted rooster. This is the icon of Nicolas Maduro's campaign. The candidate and head of state is in Petare, one of Caracas' favelas that is one of the biggest in Latin America, founded 403 years ago. He promises to finance one million new small businesses for families and the humblest. The candidate once again states that the extreme right is trying to obscure the electoral process using the governments of the United States, Argentina and Ecuador. They are looking for no elections. A hecatomb to shout for the suspension of the elections. I know the plans. Nerves of steel, calm and sanity. And rain or shine, on July 28th there will be elections in Venezuela, nobody is going to sabotage them. And also in Petare, one of the nine opposition candidates, in a meeting with some of his followers preparing for the day's events. Thank you very much for interviewing me. I want to be president because I am sure that I can make Venezuela the best homeland in the world, with an economy with social inclusion that will make it possible for those who have less to live much better. <laughs> Operation Gallup begins with the swearing in of more than 5,000 people belonging to the Venezuela First Party. In these days, they will mobilize in the communities campaigning in favor of their candidate, Jose Brito. Brito denied rumors about a possible resignation from his presidential candidacy. We will not allow that four rich people of this country go and set fire to this country to confront us with our siblings, because whoever here is a chavista or an opponent, above all of that, we are all from Caracas, we are all Venezuelans. The evangelical pastor Javier Bertucci from the Party of Change is in Zulia, the region with the most voters in the country. He affirms to continue in the race for the presidency. Because I am stronger, you decline, and you also decline, that is not democracy, democracy is everyone participates and the people choose one of the options, and in that sense, no, I am not going to decline. And the law indicates that up to 10 days before the start of the voting, any party may substitute or modify its nomination. If there is no time to change the photo on the ballot sheet, 
the votes will be credited to the substitute candidate. We change topic. Colombian authorities captured 52 people Thursday following the murders of social leaders and peace signatures. Among those arrested were 14 members of the Central General Staff, the main dissidents of the Revolutionary Armed Forces of Colombia, and 13 members of the Clan del Golfo criminal gang, according to police sources. Operation Themis, led by the Colombian military forces, issued arrest warrants for members of the country's main armed groups, considered to be the alleged perpetrators and participants in a total of 57 attacks against community leaders. The Subcommittee on Constitutional Accusations of the Peruvian Congress decided to declare as admissible the constitutional complaint against President Dina Boluarte, in the case known as Rolex, for the alleged crime of improper passive bribery. The accusation was made last month by the interim national prosecutor Juan Carlos Villena and concludes the governor of Ayacucho, Wilfredo Oscarina. The incident occurred after the president and her possession to a total of around 15 Rolex watches, which caused tensions in Peruvian politics and, as a result, two Peruvian ministers resigned and authorities raided Boluarte's residency of starting a motion and Congress that seeks the president dismissal. The decision to approve the complaint against Boluarte was supported by 17 votes in favor and two against. Social organizations in Argentina reported on Thursday the failure of negotiation of the Minimum Vital and Mobile Wage Council and the state, while the state will establish by decree the wage allocation. The current value is $234,000 and the employers declared that they will only raise it to $264,000 in October, with staggered increase. The Autonomous Workers Centers of Argentina denounced the complicity of the government with the big economic groups. For its part, the General Confederation of Labor described the business sector offered as shameful. In a statement, they declared they thought to reach an agreement with the business sector in order to recompose this wage reference, but instead they found an acceptable proposal. Let's take a short break, but remember you can join us on TikTok at Telesur English, where you will find news in different format, news updates and more. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to From the South. On the other hand, in the United States, on Thursday, another Democrat legislator asked Joe Biden to leave the country's presidential race. In this regard, Montana State Senator John, John Tester became the second to call on Biden to drop out just over a week after Vermont State Senator Peter Welsh died, did so. Meanwhile, these calls bring to 25 the number of Democratic congressmen who have publicly called on Biden to step out of the race because of their concerns about Biden's ability to defeat Donald Trump. In November, an, an the 81-year-old Democratic incumbent's mental and physical fitness. We keep on on United States. On Thursday, during the last day of the Republican National Convention, Donald Trump accepted his nomination as candidate for the presidency of the United States. In his first speech after July 13th attack, the former U.S. president severely criticized the actions of the current administration headed by President Joe Biden, assuring that in case he wins the election next November, he will put an end to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine. In the meantime, during the rally held in the state of Wisconsin, the presidential candidate also declared that he will close the border with Mexico and will finish building the border wall to prevent the entry of migrants. I am running to be president for all of America, not half of America, because there is no victory in winning for half of America. So tonight, with faith and devotion, I proudly accept your nomination for President of the United States. Thank you. I will end the illegal immigration crisis by closing our border and finishing the wall, most of which I've already been.
On Thursday, the European Mediterranean Seismological Center reported that a 7.3 magnitude tremor shook the mining region of Antofagasta in northern Chile, with no report of casualty or material damage. According to the EMSCS, the seems occurred at a depth of 128 kilometers and it was felt in regions of Bolivia, Peru and Argentina. However, the probability of damage in Chile is low. Although no immediate damage was reported, the National Disaster Prevention and Response Service stated that it was investigating possible damage to people, destruction of basic services or infrastructure resulting from this earthquake. Furthermore, the National Seismological Center of the University of Chile reported multiple aftershocks near San Pedro de Atacama, whose magnitudes have ranged between 3.1 and 4.8. In Ecuador, a forest fire affected 120 hectares in the city of Giron and Santana Isabel. In the southeast, that jurisdiction due to the high levels of the great register in the area. The authority had decided to activate an emergency operations center to address the damage, while the fire brigades of the three cities are trying to control the fire. The Secretary of the Rigs Management informed that so far no houses have been affected, but warned that the fire is still active. The governmental entity detailed that during this season the low humidity level in the atmosphere, the scarce cloudiness and well, the increase in wind speed and ultraviolet radiation favored the creation of forest fires. We have, we have a financial break coming up, but before we invite you to join our WhatsApp community for our English-speaking audience, you can scan the QR code on the screen to join directly and share the link to reach more people. Constant news coverage of Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as the rest of the world. Financial break, don't go away. Welcome back to From the South. In the Netherlands, the International Court of Justice has ruled by 14 votes to 1 that Israel must immediately cease all new settlements, activities and evacuate all settlers from the occupied Palestinian territories. Through a public session, the declaration began after hearing the arguments of the Palestinian side and 49 member states of the United Nations Organization. In turn, the ICJ found that Israel legislation and measures constitute a violation of the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination and apartheid. In this context, the court ruled that all countries should stop recognizing Israel's illegal presence in occupied Palestinian territory and the regime must provide compensation for damage to all affected persons in the region, in addition to ceasing immediately all settlement activities. The Palestinian food distribution program announced a cut in the food rations provided by the United Nations due to the massive displacement in the Gaza Strip. The most recent report of the United Nations Organization pointed out that 9 out of 10 Palestinians moved to the refugee camps at least once a month after being evicted by the occupying forces. On the other hand, the workers reduced their food consumption to guarantee the supply to the new refugees. On Thursday afternoon, the Al Falah school, located southeast of Gaza City, was the target of an Israeli strike that killed two civilians and wounded five more. According to local sources, after the daily blast, the victims were transferred to the Arab Al Ali Hospital in Gaza City. Since October 2023, the Israeli aggression in the Gaza Street has killed more than 38,000 Palestinians, most of them women and children. In addition, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, for the first time since the beginning of the offenses had against the, uh, May 6, visited the city of Rafah, which has become one of the key areas of war that have been ongoing for more than nine months and in which some 39 southern Palestinians and 326 Israeli soldiers have died. <laughs> 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 
During the meeting of the United Nations Security Council to discuss the situation in the Middle East, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov denounced the shipment of weapons by the United States to Israel. The Russian position is supported by the UN, which has consistently called for a halt to armed flows in order to bring about cessation of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Lavrov assures agreeing with the UN's view that as soon as Washington's armed aid to Tel Aviv ends, the bloodshed will stop. On the disposition, Lavrov also stressed that the Slavic nation supports a permanent ceasefire on Gazan territory, as well as re a release of Palestinian deprived of their freedom. A massive computer blackout occurred on Friday, affecting supermarkets, airlines, ports, and banks worldwide. In this sense, a number of computer services of technology company Microsoft suffered problems in several parts of the world as a result of an incident with the cybersecurity company CrowdStrike. The alarms about technical failure began in Australia and spread to Europe, the United States, and other locations. The issues also affected a number of broadcaster companies as well as banks, supermarkets, train services and airlines. Meanwhile, some media outlets also reported that the outage left thousands of users without access to the cloud computing platforms and Microsoft 365 services. The failure generated delays in the scheduled flights of several airlines with incidents in Australia, Hong Kong, India and Europe. Likewise, in the United States, all flights of several major airlines were affected due to the technical problem. From Spanish airports, an air navigation warned that an incident in the computer system was producing alterations in the systems, and in the airports of the network in the whole Iberian country, gradually the companies reported that they have been recovering some of their systems. And we have come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at telesurenglish.net. And join us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram and Telegram. For Telesur English, I'm Pablo Micheliche. Thank you for watching.